Hey guys, Mr. Happy here, and today we are going to pick up where we left off with the main story quest for Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn. If you haven't already, I recommend you catch up with the previous parts of the story so far by checking out the videos on my channel. I also have a video on the lore behind the Binding Coil of Bahamut, so be sure to check that out. And of course, I must say, again, I am no master storyteller, so if you're looking for an immersive experience, I recommend that you either experience the story firsthand in the game, or you go to the journal in your in-room and experience it there. Thank you. A Realm Awoken begins with a visit to the Waking Sands to pick up the pieces where things left off. Upon entering and approaching Minfilia, you find out that since the Scions of the Seventh Dawn made themselves known to the world and defeated La Habrea and Gaius, that many businesses around Eorzea have begun attempting to coerce them. By providing funds for the Scions, these businesses are in hopes that the Scions will provide them with a service such as dealing with late payments. After sending away but another would-be employer, Minfilia seems troubled at these intentions. She wishes to remain neutral from the other city-states, but she also knows that the money could greatly benefit their cause. She bids you consult with the others, who are all on the fence about the whole thing as she is. In this moment of uncertainty, Alphanod proposes a drastic change to Minfilia, that the Scions move off of Uldan's soil and abandon the Waking Sands. In order to remain truly neutral, he suggests that they move to Revenant's Toll in Mordona. It sits on neutral soil, with no city-state claiming it for their own, which would give them some much-desired freedom to act. Minfilia does not seem keen to the idea and sends Alphanod and the adventure away. Alphanod is not without knowledge of why Minfilia wishes to stay on Uldan's soil. Her mother, Flamen, may still be alive and she hopes for it, and by staying on Uldan soil, she hopes to hear more of her whereabouts. She was thought dead after the Calamity, but has recently been sighted in a variety of areas. You follow several leads through Thanalan and Costa del Sol before you end up in Wineport. Here you find that Flamen is trying to create a perfume of some sorts. After saving her from a gubu and discerning her identity, you agree to help her finish her concoction so she will return to Minfilia. You get her the last ingredient, salamander oil, helping her finish off the perfume. With this, she returns to Minfilia, who is ecstatic now knowing that her mother is alive. She also explains to her that her father was a member of the Alamegan resistance, and after his death, Flamen is the one who raised her. After congratulating Minfilia on all she has accomplished, Flamen finally convinces her that she must proceed with Alphanod's plan if she truly wishes for the Scions to be at their best. With Minfilia's consent, preparations begin for the big move to Mordona. While Minfilia and Alphanod work tirelessly to make the move as smooth as possible, Flamen grows concerned over a damaged earring for a short time, but you fix that and all is well again. Not long after this though, Alphanod calls the Scions together to announce their new home in Mordona, the Rising Stones. In their new base of operations, they will have the full support from the city-states and the locals in Revenant's Toll. With this, the Scions take their first big step in becoming Eorzea's Shining Light. For the next several days, you spend your time gathering supplies that will aid Revenant's Toll in becoming a secure base of operations. Between some supplies stolen by the Ixali and a wardstone in the Sunken Temple of Karn, you manage to greatly fortify the area. Now with defenses taken into account, you are tasked with dealing with some would-be invaders, specifically Garleans. They have some new explosives they are planning to use, so you enter Castrum Sentry and personally see that they malfunction inside of the base. Successful, you return to be told that you should join some guild hests to gather some notoriety and talk amongst the adventurers of Revenant's Toll. You complete these guild hests swiftly before returning. You do a few more chores for Alphanod and Tataru before the Scion's first big mission since La Habrea's defeat rises to your attention. The Adder's Nest in Gridania has sent word that something resembling a primal is threatening Gridania and potentially the realm. They requested the, event, the adventure by name, so you head over to Gridania to learn more of this threat. You meet Kuplakop, a Moogle, and the elder seeds here, Kani Sena, in the Lotus Stand, where the troubled Moogle speaks of his benevolent king, Good King Mogulmog the Twelfth, and his return to Eorzea. After explaining his origin, it confuses everyone that what seems to be nothing more than a mythical being would be summoned as a primal. 
However, you must act, and after making the correct preparations, Kupla Kop agrees to betray his fellow Mughals and takes you to the entrance of Thornmarch. As you meet up with him at Sweet Bloom Pier, you find three members of the Mughals Guard threatening him and the rest of the world while they're at it, before departing peacefully. Kupla Kop begs you to defeat the Good King to free these Mughals from going down the wrong path. After escorting him through the forest, you come upon the Bramble Patch where the entrance to Thornmarch awaits. With allies aside you, Kupla Kop bids you enter and defeat the Good King once and for all. While the Mughals come at you one at a time, it isn't long before they gather and perform a ritual within the Thornmarch. This event causes a giant Mughal, none other than the Good King himself, to emerge in a glorious fashion. Seeking to defend his loyal Mughals guard, all eight of them proceed to fight you and your allies before ultimately being defeated. The Mughals guard flee, and you leave the Thorn March unsure of what you just experienced. All Mughals kind owe you a debt as you return to Gridania to report on the incident. Unfortunately, based on what you report, the others declare that this has to be the work of the Asians. Only they could give the Mughals a way to call forth nothing more than a mythical being of their past with just the use of Aether. You return to the Waking Sands, where the remaining Scions are still working on the preparations for the move, to report on this as well. Minfilia shares her concern that Asians are indeed behind this, though she is grateful that this proved as another means to prove the Scions' importance to Eorzea, at least to the Seeds here. With this in mind, the group prepares for their departure to Mordona. They leave in small groups as to not draw too much attention. The rest shall leave, and you and Minfilia shall be the last to leave. It is in this moment that she reveals that Yurian J will be remaining at the Waking Sands as he studies the Primals to learn of a way to truly defeat them. While you are talking with him, you hear a scream from Minfilia's room. You rush over to find her on the floor. She is alive, but unable to move, seemingly injured. Without further delay, the Echo steps in to show you the events that had transpired just before your arrival. In your vision, Minfilia is approached by an Asian donned in a white robe, something none of the Scions have seen before. Claiming to be nothing more than an emissary, he slipped past everyone unnoticed, claiming only those with a strong sense of perception and gifts, such as the Echo, can see him. While he is no doubt evil at heart, the information he reveals to Minfilia almost seems like an attempt to create understanding between the Asians and the Scions. He reveals that the Echo's true purpose is the same as the Asians, that they have more in common than they think. He claims it could end the hostilities between the two groups and see that they both have the same goal. He also reveals La Habrea's survival, that which we saw at the end of the story in A Realm Reborn. He takes his departure after revealing these things, claiming that him and Minfilia would meet again, hopefully as friends. When she attempts to stop him from leaving, he turns around and pierces her body with a blade made of nothing but dark energy. As he looks at her helpless body, he questions himself about her. He asks a very peculiar question, is it by her hand that you survived the Ardor before departing? For those who wonder, the Asians referred to the Umbral Eras as the Ardors. Thus, this is a nod to Minfilia surviving the 7th Umbral Era. Minfilia quickly gets to her feet after you return from your vision with the Echo, estranged by his lack of intention to kill her. When Yurianje and Tataru enter the room, Minfilia tells Yurianje to contact their allies, the students of Baldessian, to check their archives for reports of a white-robed Asian. Yurianje claims he saw him leaving the Waking Sands calmly, just walking out instead of using his teleportation magics. You find the man outside and follow him. He puts you through several trials as you follow him, testing your strength and resolve before finally stopping to speak with you. He thanks you for the opportunity to speak with him, understanding of how you were able to defeat La Habrea. When you raise your weapons, he grows concerned over the hostility bestowed upon an emissary, claiming his act against Minfilia was naught but self-defense. With this, he goes on to claim that Heidelin's strength is waning, and that soon the world shall see a great change. Before his departure, he reveals himself to be named Elidibus, a direct emissary of the one true god, Zodiark. You return and tell Minfilia of his name and his message. As it was, so shall it be again. It troubles her. 
and even more so that he seems to harbor a grudge against La Habrea's actions regarding Ultima Weapon. Minfilia reveals a bit more of her past, specifically that her father, Warburton, was a Garlean spy for the Alamegan Resistance. He filled a journal full of information on the primals and bids you give it to Yurian J so that he may study it in depth. With this final deed, it is time to leave the Waking Sands behind, so you travel to Mordona and enter the Rising Stones. You enter and observe the massive complex with Louis Soi's staff at the head of it all. Unfortunately, dark times are indeed ahead, as it is revealed that the students of Baldessian are no longer responding to messages. Fearing for the worst, Minfilia asks Yurian J to discover what has happened to them. While you press on without their aid, Elidibus returns to the Assian stronghold, confronted by one of his fellow Assians, Nabrialis. Nabrialis questions Elidibus's actions to reveal himself and confront those with the Echo, claiming that his intentions are not yet clear before disappearing. Elidibus claims they will soon see that Zodiac's plan and theirs are the same, before the screen cuts to black. What could all this mean? What is the true purpose of the Echo that Elidibus speaks of? What exactly is Zodiac planning? I suppose we'll start to figure it out at least in patch 2.2. I have some theories on this, but let's save that for another video. Anyway guys, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, please like, favorite, subscribe, and share. For more Final Fantasy videos, be sure to check out the rest of my channel for some other content. Also, feel free to follow me on Facebook and Twitter where you can get regular updates about what I'm doing. Of course, you feel free to follow me on Twitch where I do stream Final Fantasy games and we'll be streaming some other things for the year of 2014. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching and until next time, take care.